Uh, we have a real, real privilege tonight to have a dear, dear friend of the house and mine personally. Mark Crawford is a prophet out of uh, the great uh, Down Under, and I'm not talking about hell, I'm talking about... <clears throat> I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about uh, Australia, great nation of Australia, which we really love, love going there and love being with their people. Uh, we met Mark, I don't know how many years, it's been 15, maybe, maybe plus years, years ago. He happened to come through here, uh, a mutual friend of ours was part of the team here and he came through and we, we got connected and over the years, it's been just exciting to minister with him in various places around the world. Uh, Mark was responsible for our ability to get into the Philippines and have a school there. If it wasn't for Mark, we would never have done that. He'd been, at that time, he'd been ministering there 17 years in that nation. And he invited Dan McCullum and I to come over and do a conference with some young people. And we got there and, and it gripped a heart and took our heart away. And so now uh, we have a school there. Uh, a supernatural school that we just love to go. In fact, I leave Monday. Mark leaves Monday to go. To, we're going to both be there together for the graduation of our school uh, in the Philippines. Um, and if, if it wasn't for Mark, we'd never have that opportunity. So you have key relationships around the world that open up doors, right? Uh, we're not in this thing alone. We need each other. Uh, and we, we get to have what we call strategic life exchange. We, we have something to give and they have something to give and together we can open doors together that we can't open alone. That was really good. I mean, that was like really good. But he's a dear friend uh, of Deb and I's personally, he and his wife. And uh, it's always a joy to have him come around. And uh, he was actually not gonna be here tonight. He was gonna be by himself somewhere in Sacramento waiting to fly out, and I said, no, come on by, and you will enjoy him. Would you please welcome Mark Crawford as he comes. Uh, good day. Uh, yeah, okay, keep working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll do okay, thank you, Dave. I've had you interpret me. <laughs> uh, well, I, I want to talk to you about... Um, oh, iPads, come on. I want to talk to you about a favourite subject of mine and uh, something we've been hearing um, a little more about. It's my, my latest book is actually a part, is the subject of this. Um, and personally, it's been really really something that's been of a revelation and uh, so I thought hey it'd be nice to get to share it with you um, tonight. I realized um, just uh, just a few days ago something that I'm living in denial. I'm living not in Egypt, not in the river Nile but living in denial. And, and I thought, that's, that's, that's an interesting concept. And then I realized I, the denial that I'm living in is denying the enemy access to areas of, of, of life and to some of the sorts of thoughts and things that, you know, come to me. You know, for, since we were in Fiji, I was in Fiji with Dave teaching in the school and I got sick there. For two and a half months, I'm just battling um, some sickness. I wouldn't be here tonight. I was just... A real mess, and then last Thursday something happened. Something changed, and uh, just in a moment, it's just going from being really sick, hardly able to even function, into just a change. You know, it's like in a moment things can change. Just in a moment, just a word can change things. Um, and so we're meant to live in a place where we're denying the enemy access, and we're called to to heavenize earth. Yeah, that's what we're called to do is to heavenize earth. And, um, you know, f um, people have not understood that for, for many, many years. And so, therefore, there's too much hell on earth. So we're called to, to, bring, the, to bring heaven to, to earth. It's the plan of God. It's the will of God. And so, you know, I live in that realm and that place where I'm uh, really excited. I, 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 I'm looking for 
how, you know, how we can influence earth, how we can change and bring a, a place where, you know, heavens are on earth. And so this is my favourite subject. Um, it really, part of it began is, as I focused upon Romans 14, Romans 14 and um, verse 17 and 18. And when I first read this, I thought, gee, is there some way for me to take the scripture out? You know, it's like, I, I wouldn't, but if I could, it'd be, I want to cross this out. Because it starts like this, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It's like, hey, a couple of favorite things. You know, what's wrong with that? You know, it's like, uh, I'm a bit of a foodie. Uh, it's been so tough over the last couple of months because I haven't been eating. But, you know, it's like, you know, I, I, I like food. Yeah? I mean, is there anybody else with me here? Yeah. Um, and, um, and so I thought, oh, my God, the kingdom's not that. Wow, what am I going to do? And uh, then I realized that that was only part of what that scripture is saying. In fact, actually, the Passion Translation says, that for the kingdom of God is not a matter of rules about food and drink. And that is the concept. If you look at it, it's not about the regulations of what you can eat and what you can't eat. It's, it's not about that. That's the whole focus. It's not about the food and drinking, but it's about the... It's about the regulation. It's about you can't do this and you can't do that. That's not what the kingdom's about. And then he goes on to say, hey, but the kingdom is about righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, maybe it's my accent. Let me say that again. It is about righteousness and it is about peace and it's about joy in the Holy Spirit. And then it goes on to say this, he who serves Christ in these things, the people who live uh, for righteousness, the people who live to see righteousness changing around about them, um, who, who live in a place where they are releases of peace, they bring about peace. They are a people who live where joy is released, where joy is increasing. Those sort of people, are acceptable to God. Right? That it's not about Him be, making us acceptable, but that action, those things He loves. But more than that, it are approved by men, are approved by the people around about you. People around about us want to know righteousness. They want to know what it is to be able to live in a place of realizing forgiveness, stuff they've struggled with for years and years and years. They want to know how to be forgiven. They don't know how to necessarily get there. So many people today live with such in turmoil, inside turmoil, turmoil and chaos inside. They want peace. They want a peace that passes just their thinking. They want a peace that's beyond just the chaos. And everybody loves joy. I mean, everybody likes to laugh. They, they like to be in a place where there's some, uh, is joy. And that's what we meant to live out of. That's the life that we meant to live out of. Joy. Now, I, I don't know about you, but... Um, I've, I've I'm stopped doing this on Facebook, but, you know, often when something goes wrong, travel a lot, so there's a lot of del flight delays and all of that sort of stuff, so I would put that on Facebook, and um, nearly most of the people would say something like, the joy of the Lord is your strength, brother. It's like, mm, I don't want to, I mean, yeah, that's true. That's true, but, you know, it's like, Oh, yeah, that, that's true, but, you know, I want some compassion. You know, it's like, oh, I'm feeling for you or whatever else. But that people keep saying to me things like the joy of the Lord. And the more I preach this message, of course, the more posts I get about the joy of the Lord being your strength. And it's true. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That's, that's a truth, right? My issue is, don't just keep telling me the truth. Help me to actually do it. Help me to actually know how to experience the joy of the Lord. 
because you just keep telling me it's just going to frustrate me and it just frustrates people to be told something that they can't yet get hold of. They don't know how to do it. It's just like, oh, let's just keep telling them the truth, keep telling them the truth, and they get frustrated because they don't know how to live it. So I began to go on a journey to be able to discover what this joy is about. I remember being at a conference at, at Bethel at uh, Leaders Advance and there was a workshop um, that Steve Buckland did. Um, it, it was an earlier day, so I didn't really know who he was, but I knew that um, he was teaching on something that was a, a, a you know, really favorite subject of mine at that particular point of time, which was changing the way that you think. Because I'd been s- declaring for a long time, if you keep doing what you've always done, then you'll get what you've always got. So you've got to stop doing what you've always been doing to get something different. Right? There's so many people just keep doing the same thing and they, you know, end up in the same place and try and can't figure out why they're in the same place. So I, here I was in this conference, sitting on the front row. That's what pastors do. And um, sitting, sitting down there and there's a whole lot of people behind me. And so he comes out and he says, now listen, I'm going to tell you a number of things that we believe to be truth, but they're actually lies. I said, fair enough, that's a good idea. Get my writing paper out. I'm going to take note of all of this. And he said, now, when I tell you one of them, I want you to laugh at it. So I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, that's dumb. It's, it's like, that's stupid. How can you laugh at something that's not funny? Right? That's a lie. Why would you want to, how could you? So I'm sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, you know, shaking my head thinking this is lame. And so he says the first one, and of course, he's looking at me, and everybody else is looking at me, and so I go, ha, 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 ha. And so I thought he would just do a couple of them, but he didn't. He just kept going, did another one, you know, looking at me, and I'm going, ha, ha, ha. And he just kept going, and just kept going, and just kept going and going. What surprised me the most was it wasn't too long, and I was, I was laughing uncontrollably. In fact, so much so, I fell off the chair on the floor, rolling around in absolute, absolute laughter that, and, uh, that I just couldn't contain. And it all started because I just started to let the joy out. So I began to come on a, on a journey and to remember even some things in my life that... Um, I realized about joy. You know that the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty for pulling down strongholds. So the weapons that we have, God's given us weapons, but they're not carnal. So a carnal weapon looks like a weapon, right? Like a machine gun or, or a machete or, you know, whatever. You know, you call that a knife? No, this is a knife. It's like Dundee, you know, I had to put that in. Um, so um, uh, the weapons that we have don't look like weapons, but they're mighty, they're powerful. And you can mistake the weapons or not even recognize the weapons, and joy is a weapon. Now, I learned this uh, quite a few years ago. I was in Pakistan. Um, we were going to do um, a, a conference. Um, I'd been asked to come on this particular team. I was the only pastor on it. We were going to teach these pastors about the gifts of the Spirit, lay hands on them, uh, impart um, to them. And so we've been traveling through Pakistan. We came to the capital called Islamabad, and uh, we stayed overnight. Pretty exhausting traveling and some fun and interesting things um, happening. And so... I was sharing the room with the team leader. Now, the team leader, he was a fairly sober sort of a person, pretty serious sort of a guy, you know, um, um, good friend of mine. And he was um, shorter than me and nearly as wide as he was tall, right? So, yeah. Anyway. And so um, he, he was sharing the room with me. I woke up in the morning uh, after um, sleeping that night and found that I was paralyzed. I couldn't move. I, 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 I was, and, and immediately it was like, I'm scared. I, I, I mean, fear just ran through me, you know, as you would. 
I, I couldn't move any part of my body. And so I, I, I yelled out to him and he quickly got the rest of the team in and uh, um, they started to pray and they were praying in tongues. They're just warring, you know, and I, I'm just, I am just really afraid. Um, you, know, you know, I know, now know what the end of the story was, but, you know, so I was really scared. And so I remember seeing him standing just on the side. He's praying in tongues. And then he starts to laugh because I could see his belly going up and down. And he's laughing. And I'm thinking, this is not funny. This is not funny. I, I'm, I'm the one here paralyzed. I'm as scared as anything. And, and here you are laughing. Um, and then the next team member starts to laugh. And then laugh to, and laugh. And, and, and I'm, I'm getting more and more ticked off because it's just like, this isn't funny, guys. I'm the one here with the problem. I'm, I'm really af- scared. And then it hit me. And it's just like liquid joy. It's just like it hit the top of my head and just went through my whole body and it completely healed. Yeah, and it was joy that broke that. that the power of joy busted open whatever then. And, and w- then what happened, we went into a conference and um, did some, some um, ministry and trying diff- different things. But directly out of that conference, 20 churches got planted. 20 churches that, uh, you know, like, hey, isn't that amazing? So you can see what the enemy was trying to do. The enemy was trying to stop all, all, all of that. But the, the power of joy broke that situation, which was like... So what happens is that joy itself confuses the enemy. So when, so when you release joy when you want to cry... Right when you're anxious and worried, instead of doing that, you start to laugh at a situation or start to laugh at something. It just confuses the enemy. He doesn't know what to do with it. And because joy is a fruit of the Spirit, you you know that, don't you? So a fruit of the Spirit is the activity of the Holy Spirit brings about joy. Yeah? I mean, seriousness is not a fruit of the Spirit. (laughs) Seriousness is not a fruit of the Spirit. Seriously. Now, some people have elevated it to a place that you would think it is, right? You know, and, and I'm amazed at some places, not here, of course, but in some places, it does really look like, um, you know, the people have been baptized in lemon juice. Right? It does. You know, the, the place that should be the most joyous should be the place where we are here, wherever we are. We should be the most joyous people, the most happy people, the people who our faces show what's in us because we have joy in us. Yeah? So joy, what it does is it's a destructive force to the enemy. Um, I was uh, teaching on this, preaching on this, um, uh, one, one up in Wyoming in a place called Sheridan, and uh, I didn't realize, um, but as I was speaking on this, some people that were in the, in the congregation, in the audience that particular night, came uh, very discouraged, um, very anxious. They needed to sell their house, and it had been on the market, and they had two offers. Both of those offers were way below asking price and both very conditional. And so they'd obviously had to say no to those, but they need to sell the house. And they were just really um, to, almost to the line on, on, for whatever reason it was. And, um, and so they heard me speaking about this. So going home, they decided that they were just going to spend the rest of the night laughing at it. They just released joy. They just let joy out. They just laughed at this particular issue and problem that really had been such a, a difficult thing for them. They laughed and 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 just hit it with joy. Went to sleep. Woke up next morning to a phone call. And the phone call was their realtor telling them that they had an offer. The offer was unconditional and was way above their asking price. Coincidence? I don't think so. See, the problem is this. Here's the problem. The problem is that you and I have grown up with, have been taught most of our lives that joy, laughter is the result of something. That it's a 
a movie or a joke. I mean, I could tell you something tonight that you would, a joke sort of, hopefully you would laugh at it. I could do some antics that could make you laugh. So it would be your response to something. The problem is, what if you don't have any circumstances around your life for a while that is anything to laugh about? What happens to the joy? What happens to the power of joy? What happens to the weapon of joy? So what we've been taught is is reactive. It's it's very, um, we have to have something to make us laugh. But it isn't biblical. It's not the joy that the Bible talks about because joy is a choice. So you have to learn, you have to retrain yourself and start to learn how to let the joy out. I mean, who let the joy out? Huh, huh. Make a good topic for a book, good title for a book. Now, I know that in 2000, for some of you, um, the Baha'i boys had this song, Who Let the Dogs Out? Huh, huh. Right? Some of you don't know that song at all because you're not old enough, but... Or too old. (laughs) Uh, I don't care who let the dogs out, but I do care who's going to learn to let the joy out. And so we have to be in a place where we are teaching ourselves something new, new thinking. And the new thinking is the joy of God is in me. I have to learn to let it out. I'm not waiting for something that's funny to cause me to laugh. Because when you develop this and something funny does have, you get to enjoy it a lot more. More than everybody else. And so we need to build strongholds of joy. We need to learn how to let joy out and, and build a bank account of joy so that when something happens that you really want to cry about or that you want to get anxious about, your natural response is to laugh at it. So changing the way that we think is that joy itself is a catalyst. Joy itself is a choice. Joy is a power. Joy is a weapon. So you can practice it. Maybe look in the mirror and laugh. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) It's funny. So, it, so it's learning to, to, to laugh at nothing. And I know it's weird. It feels weird. Because like, we've been trained the opposite of way that. But joy's in you. The joy giver's in you. I mean, you know, some people um, are really going to be surprised when they get to heaven. Like they just won't be able to, they're going to struggle to cope with the atmosphere of joy or being all around about them because it's a very joyful place. So, you know, it's like get used to it now. Start practicing it now. In most, uh, lots of places that I go to, I don't go with a standard message that I preach everywhere. I want to hear what God's got to say for that group of people. And, and so, therefore, um, I, I, it can get a bit pressured, you know, and it's like, God, what do you got to say? And sometimes he's not really forthcoming, you know, and it's, and it's like, oh, God, come on, what have you got to say? And I get into this stressed out place and it's like come on God what do you got and so what I've started to do is is just laugh just let the joy out and I just relax and let the joy out and I just have this great time of letting the joy out and then I start to hear what he's got to say because that whole anxiety and stress and all that sort of stuff's been pushed aside and I just I just revel in in his in his joy see I want to ask you, who let the joy out? Huh? Huh? Is it going to be you? Is it going to be you? Are you going to be somebody that's going to know how to let the joy out and attack your problems, attack your situations, attack the stuff that's around about you with joy? Yeah? That's good. There's lots of things that I'm, I can talk to you further about what the catalyst of joy is, but it's a choice. 
Let me, you know, my prayer tonight has been, Lord, in this time, can you somehow, in some way, just bring this revelation that I've got and release it to the people? So Paul says this, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. You know it. Philippians 4.4, rejoice in the Lord always. Now, rejoice means to have joy again. So if he's saying, hey, have joy again, it must be a choice. It must be a deliberate, intentional act that we are choosing to let the joy out. And then he goes, he says, listen, I want to say that again, rejoice. Be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Let joy overflow. Isn't that good? Let me, um, let me quickly just go here because I think this is a really cool... Just, can you bear with me just a moment? Yeah? Come on, Mike. Yeah. Okay, let's go to... Um, still there hello all right because this is really this is a real call psalm 100 still there haven't gone to sleep yeah Okay, lift up a great shout to the Lord. Go ahead and do it, everyone, everywhere. As you serve Him, be glad and worship Him. Sing your way into His presence with joy. And realize what, it, what it, this really means. We have the privilege of worshiping the Lord our God, for He is our Creator, and now we belong to Him. We are the people of His pleasure. You can pass through his open gates with the password of praise. Come right into his presence with thanksgiving. Come bring your thank offering to him and affectionately bless his beautiful name. For the Lord is good and ready to receive you. He is so loving that he will amaze you, so kind that he will astound you. For he is faithful for Famous for his faithfulness towards all. Everyone knows our God can be trusted, for he keeps his promises to every generation. I thought the great thing was sing your way into his presence with joy. See, joy makes a way. Joy opens up some things. Joy. There is such joy in, fullness of joy in his presence. You know, when the people of God are going out, taking the promised land, the first city, the first place was Jericho, right? And it's an amazing situation because they, the people, these people who went into the promised land and they went grumbling and complaining for all of that time, and here they are being told to keep quiet. That's pretty amazing. A million people keeping quiet. So they're told to walk around this place, Jericho, one, two, three, four, five, six days. And then on the seventh day, they go around seven times. On the seventh time, they are let out a shout. And the shout they let out is a shout of joy. And as they release this shout of joy, the walls come tumbling down. You want to bring some breakthrough into your life? Well, you start shouting joy. You release joy. You let the joy out and you see breakthroughs that takes because it's a weapon. It's something that you can attack life with. You can attack the problems with because it is such a powerful thing. Um, let me share with you from Habakkuk or Habakkuk, Japanese prophet. <laughs> Though the fig tree may not blossom, <laughs> I mean that's pretty. You know, that, that's the start. Though the fig tree, there's no blossom, no blossom, no fruit. 
nor there be fruit on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. That's a pretty bleak place, right? No potential food, no existing food, no flock. It's like nothing. There is no food and no possibility of food. It's a really sad, bleak moment. And so the prophet says this, yet, yet, people who know how to let the joy out are yet people, yetis, they're yetis. My observation is that people who don't are usually, hmm, they usually have big butts. They, have, they, are, they are the butt people. Yes, but. You know? But the people who, who really know how to let the joy out, the people who, who know that the circumstances can be pretty bleak, but they can say, yet, yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yeah? I mean... That, that, that is something that joy has captivated this prophet. He has said, listen, it looks pretty bad. It couldn't be any worse than what it is. Yeah, yeah, I am going to rejoice in God. I am going to joy in the God of my salvation. And then look what happens. He then goes on to say, the Lord God is my strength. He is feeling strengthened. He is picking up the very heart of God. God, God's strength is flowing through him. And then he goes on to say, he'll make my feet like deer's feet and he'll make me to walk on my high hills. I mean, that's at a new level. It's at a new place. But it all comes because he says, listen, the circumstance is pretty bad. Yet, yet. I'm going to release joy. I'm going to let joy out. The circumstances are nothing to laugh about. The circumstances are nothing to be excited about. But yet, I'm going to attack these circumstances with joy. It's good. But you have to learn how to let the joy out. You know, you can be in a beautiful banquet room full of food of every type. And still starve to death. Because you didn't partake. All right? So it's, part, it's partaking. Let me finish with this. It's from Deuteronomy 20, 28. Um, I know it's Old Testament, but it's very clear for us today and probably even, even more so. And so this is what the Lord said to the people. Because you didn't serve me, you didn't serve the Lord your God, with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything. He said, hey, because you didn't serve me with joy and gladness for the abundance. He said, because your focus wasn't on abundance, because you didn't realize that that's the nature of who I am and the nature of heaven. And so you, you, you really just focused upon lack. You just talked about lack all of the time. Well, therefore, I'm going to let you serve lack. Therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger, thirst, nakedness, and need of everything. You know, hunger is lack of food. Thirst is lack of water. Nakedness is lack of clothes. Everything in need of everything is just straight out lack. So what was happening with these people is because they didn't serve God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything. The focus wasn't in that place of, hey, God has everything, so we have. Let's just serve him with joy and gladness. We're going to be the yet people. He says, I'm going to let you serve what you acknowledged. I'm going to let you serve what you talked about. I'm going to let you serve what you complained about. You made the choice. I'm going to let you do it. It's not my plan, but I'm going to let you have what you chose. So I'm going to say to you tonight, who let the joy out? Who let the joy out? Who let the joy out? Huh. Huh. Who needs a breakthrough with joy 
in, the, in their life? Who, who needs some breakthrough? Okay. Um, is, is the guy standing on the end, is it, are you together? Are you together? Why don't you come on down? Did you have your hand up? Yeah, come on. Come on down. Who else? Who else needs a breakthrough in joy? Yeah? Okay, come on. Lady up there? Yeah. So one, two, three, four. Who else? Yeah. Come on. A couple there? Come on. All right. This is my book. It's uh, 30 Days of um, Joy. Um, so one a day and it'll bring about um, a breakthrough. So this is coming out of a revelation that, that God gave me, right? Um, it's, 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 um, uh, it's, it's an amazing book, but anyway, just biased, you know. Um, so what I wanted to do um, was to give it to you, and as I give it to you, receive the impartation, not only of the message, but the breakthrough that it's going to bring. Yeah? Now I'm going to pray for you and pray for everybody else. Is, is that okay? So here you go. Breakthrough for you out of joy. Now, it looks like I've had some people um, turn up that I don't have quite enough books for. So there. Okay. So you. Um, and I, so you. Okay, now the rest can stay up. I'll pray for you. Um, I do, there are some other books available out there, but that's all that I had left from my personal stash. So why don't you move around here? Why don't the rest of you stand? Okay. So you guys, come on, come on, move around over here. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you that you've given us such a weapon of joy. Uh, Father, that you have gifted us with such a wonderful power, such a way to, to bring about such confusion to the enemy. Lord, it's, a, it's something that you said is the very nature of the kingdom. And Lord, I thank you that the Holy Spirit wants to partner with us. And so tonight, Father God, I release an impartation, a breakthrough impartation of joy. Lord, such a courage, a supernatural courage, a supernatural courage to build strongholds of joy, supernatural courage to bring strongholds of joy. Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough of joy, breakthrough of joy. Hey, breakthrough of joy, breakthrough of joy. The season that's been has finished. The season that's been has finished. No longer anymore. Ha ha ha. The season that's been is finished. Finished. You're going out with joy. You came in. With something else, but you're going to release joy. Joy, 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 joy. I give you the power. I give you the power today to be yet people, to be yetis, yetis. You're going to turn your butts into yets. Yet will I, yet will I, yet will I rejoice. You are transformational people. You're people of transformation. And you transform. You transform lives, including your own. Tonight, this doesn't just stay with you. This doesn't just stay with you. It flows out to your extended family and to your network of friends. But joy of the Lord is your strength the joy of the Lord is your strength I'd rather look foolish and strong than dignified and weak <laughs> so Father just a new dimension of joy courage tonight a supernatural courage tonight that allows people to build strongholds of joy to look foolish. Father God, to dare to look foolish and indeed be strong. To be the carriers of the strength of the Lord. So Father, I want to declare this season, Father God, this dimension, this time 
where people know how to let the joy out. Let the joy out. Let the joy out. And so the seeds that are sown tonight will bring forth a harvest, a harvest, a hundredfold plus harvest, Father, in Jesus' name. So, who let the joy out? 